Hello everyone, this is Kenny Brandy from Cambrotech and welcome back to the channel. So in this series of videos, we are learning Python and to be more specific, this is Essence 207 Programming for Engineers, a course taught at the University of Ghana. Now, what we have been doing over the past couple of videos is we have been going through this particular structure and this looks like more or less the structure of a book. So we have been dealing with chapter 1, chapter 2 and currently we are on chapter 13 when we are looking at python tuples and these tuples are also part of the collections i spoke about earlier we started with list and now we're on tuples and we have some notes over here so a python tuple is a collection which is ordered now a tuple is not mutable in the case of list we could change things over here in the case of tuples we cannot change now it allows duplicate members as well and we can do some unpacking so now this is what I want to show you. Remember with the lists, we had um, the variable name countries. And if we do this, there's a list. And in the case of tuples, we are going to use this brackets parentheses over here to represent a tuple. So now over here, and let me just use different examples. So let's say we have fruits. So inside of fruits, let's say we have mango, we have apple, and let's have banana over here. So now if I'm to print out fruits as I have it over here, if I'm to save this and run this, we do get our fruits being printed out over here, at least as presented in here. And as I always do, if we are to check the data type of our fruit variable, then we are expecting to see a tuple. So now when I run this, you clearly see that we have this showing up as class tuple. So these tuples also have their own unique features. And it says that it also allows duplicate members. So for instance, let's have banana being duplicated over here. I'll do a comma and save this. And now when I run this, we have double bananas over here. Now, let me just clear this and check out something over here. Remember, we were also checking out, especially with list. Okay, I'm trying to draw some comparison. So we are mirroring the two of them. Now, when I do this, and for instance, passing an index, Remember, the indexing also starts from zero. So now when I run this, we do get a mango over here. Now this is looking good. When I do one, we do get an apple. And finally, when I do two, we also get a banana. In that same way, if I do a negative one, we get a banana. And we already know this. I'm not going to go too deep into this. So this is looking good. But now let's look at, so we've actually checked the fact that it is ordered because it is ordered by the indexing over here. And we also have checked that it can contain duplicate members. But now let's look at the mutability of tuples, which we are saying that it is not mutable. We cannot change certain elements in here by just wanting to change them. So now this is what I'm going to do. If I'm to do, for instance, fruits, and passing the index just as we did with list and now if i say i want to change mango to for instance orange if i save this and now i'm trying to run fruit over here trying to do a mutation over here if i run this it tells me that there's a type error now this tuple that we have object does not support item assignment now in that same way remember what we used to do with lists we could use for instance an append to append for instance a fruit and in this case orange at the last end of our list if i do this and say i'm trying to append and run this it tells me that there's an attribute error over here tuple has no attribute append so clearly we cannot do any mutation over here now this becomes a very good candidate 
where we want to store data we don't want to change for instance maybe password and things of that sort we can just put it in a tuple and it is going to be kept safe nothing is going to change we just know that there's an order and we can just assess them as simple as that they have other benefits which we are going to discuss with some of the applications we are going to build so now let's look at unpacking and let's say we have um let's say x comma y and we have some coordinates okay we have some coordinates and let's say we have let's say two just for the benefit of this argument zero this in itself is a tuple but then because of what we have over here we are unpacking these values with this proportion as we have done in the past so currently if i'm to print out for instance x if i'm to save this and run this we see that x is 2 over here and y is definitely going to be 0 as we see over here now what if we have more values we have so for instance we have three values over here but then only two variables in here and when i run this we do get a problem it says too many values to unpack expected two so there were too many values to unpack and remember what we used to do now when i do a star over here let's see what happens when i run this we do get this y showing up as a list so whenever you use this star to prefix anything when we are trying to unpack it unpacks it into a list that's by default and now when we do an x over here and run this we do get a two over here this we have covered and that's why i haven't spent so much time on this if you don't get this whole thing down refer to where we talked about data and data types i think in the chapter three this is where i actually went extensive to explaining some of these things so we can do unpacking over here and this is looking good all right so this is just going to be a very brief introduction to what we have as tuples over here now there are some few methods we can actually look at so for instance if i do fruits if i do a fruit dot if i do a fruit dot you can see that i have just two methods over here just two of them there's nothing much we can do and now we have something over here um, underscore underscore add underscore underscore these are what we call magic methods and we are going to cover them later on um, as we move along the rest of the things over here are just magic methods we only have two methods we can use over here that's count and index so now let's try and experiment with the count and it says returns the number of occurrence of a value so you could see that clearly it is ordered and it allows duplicate members so if i'm to duplicate banana a number of times over here so i have two bananas and if i'm to count the number of bananas i have and let me just clear this and show this up over here and this is going to return an int so i can definitely print this out and now when i save this we have two bananas over here if this banana was off and i run this we definitely get one banana and we can actually check the number of apples we have in here and definitely we have just one apple in here so clearly these are some of the things we can do i mean there's nothing much and we can do also for instance fruits dot index we just want to check the index and it says return the first index of a value so we want to re check the index of for instance maybe mango and we can check this over here so this is going to return the index of mango and let me just comment what we have over here now when i run this the index of mango is indeed zero because that's the first occurrence of mango we have over here if you are to check the index of apple apple is going to give us a one and banana is definitely going to give us a two so these are the only two methods we have in here and i think um they are i mean very interesting use cases where we want to use a tuple like i said 
we are likely to use a tuple in cases where we don't want the data changing we don't want things to be appended and things of that sort as pertains to list all right so this is going to be the end of this video a very short one now if you have any question kindly put it out in the comment section for those of you who are in my class we'll meet in class and discuss some of these things extensively now if you find value in the videos i'm putting out over here then kindly support my work by subscribing to my Cambridge Tech channel and don't forget to hit on the notification button so that anytime i release a video you'll be duly notified also share this video with friends and family who will find this content very useful at Cambridge Tech we say learn programming, you can do it. Bye bye and catch you in the next video.